Hello and you're very welcome to another edition of the JMAC Podcast. I'm John Mann and of course this podcast is sponsored by OrgaRetro.com. Check the website for all your retro gear needs and wants. And today I'm joined by uh, Kevin McGurdy and uh, Connor Gormley and the pair of boys of three all Ireland titles, three All-Stars and four Ulster titles put together. Put together. So Kevin, how's that been? Uh, <laughs> thanks. I think Connor still wants my All-Ireland Club medal, so oh. he, he'd swap them all for that one, you know. I uh, wouldn't mind one of them, I definitely wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I know, I wouldn't mind one of his all stars, just one. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve Good one. You deserve one. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with yourself first, Connor. How's tricks? Yeah, good, yeah, going all right now, happy enough. And it was good to uh, see action back back on the field anyway. And even though we can't get it supported and all the rest, but it's at least good to see a bit of action on TV. De- definitely, definitely. And uh, Kev, yourself, how's tricks? Oh, good. Really good day Saturday, watching four or five games and following it. So. Really entertaining, really interested, and I suppose lots to talk about tonight. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I suppose uh, we can uh, crack into it and uh, lots of games to go through and uh, to divulge in all the action. So in Division 1, we had uh, Kerry Galway, Tyrone Donegal, Roscommon, Dublin and Monaghan against Armagh. So the first game was Kerry against Galway, an absolutely brilliant performance by Kerry and a star performance by Mr David Clifford. Uh, Connor, I presume you've seen uh, that game over the weekend. Uh, I did all right. I seen bits of it. Uh, I seen most of it. I just, as you say, sensational from David Clifford. Like his, especially his third goal there, just was something, something special. Just such skill and to do that and to send the goalie in there on the corner back, flying along the line and, and to tuck it back inside was amazing. And I think somebody seen that said today there that any defender going to to mark that mom on Sunday is going to have nightmares on a Saturday night thinking about it. So. Oh, just a sensational player at the minute and probably one of the best players is, is about it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, what did you make of the game as a whole, I suppose? Obviously, this uh, Kerry juggernaut, they're really kind of preparing themselves for the championship and onto the league head. But what did you make of the game itself? Um, a good enough game, I suppose, when you try to be Kerry. I think they're stung from what happened to them last year. And they're really, they're really looking like a team that's going to put it up to Dublin, you would imagine, so it's an interesting game that they have now this weekend coming up, but on the game itself, you can just see that Kerry seem to be well ahead, you know, they're just, they're sort of cruise control all the time, and they're Clifford and these boys off with maybe 15 or 20 minutes to go, like to show how much the control they were off the game, especially, And but from a Galway point of view, maybe you probably Joyce Brown to be a wee bit disappointed in, on how they performed and how, how it went for them. You know, I'd, I'd imagine they'd have been down to Kerry full of confidence and looking to, maybe if they didn't win the game, but put down a bit of a marker and, and, and show show what they're, they're capable of doing and, and see what, what they could do. But it's uh, difficult to see how Galway can turn the season around after that performance, you know. But as you said, Kerry are seem to be the team that's really going to put up to Dublin and after, after that performance, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll not get carried away maybe with it. You know, they have to keep the head settled. And, there's, there's more work to do, but it'll be highly impressive with that performance. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely brilliant, and uh, it was it was a great performance. And yourself, Kevin, uh, that was the first prediction you got right. So uh, fair play. Yeah, well, I stated to you last week when I was on here that I think Galway are in real big trouble under Park Joyce. He was shoehorned into the job. Kevin Walsh ushered out of it, um, and you know Kevin McStay made a real good point on League Sunday last night. Before COVID lockdown, they were top of the blocks in Division 1. Since the impact of it and then coming through last season, they sort of stung out of the championship. And the result yesterday from a, a traditional county like Galway, you know, was absolutely wretched, horrid. Um, you know, it would actually, it's a funny point, but that eight scores compared to carry six, yet carry outscored in double. Mm. So um, I don't know what it is with party choice. For example, over the last number of years, I've watched a lot of Sigerson football. And there's a fellow called Kieran Malloy. He brings them on after 62 minutes yesterday. Kieran Malloy's played a lot with, uh, with obviously, NUIG, and he's played a lot with uh, Cora Finn. Guy would make most teams in Ireland, yet he's not starting for Galway. You have to ask the question, why? You have to ask the question, what sort of setup they have when, after 22 minutes, Kerry had already scored three goals. You know, where's the defensive setup there? What's happening with it? What sort of system they're playing? So lots of questions around Galway. I totally agree with Connor. I I can't really. This is a you know this is a, a knife to the heart for them as the season goes on. How do they really get back on on the wagon here? You know they've Dublin to play a couple of weeks time, and you know that's not going to be easy for them. 
In terms of Kerry, look, they weren't up against much. Yes, you can give Clifford all the plot that you want. He gets them. He is that type of player. Shawnee Shea, the same. But in, in Kerry terms, until they bring that all iron home, you know, that's the big, big question for them two guys this year in particular. Okay. I was really impressed by Clifford's brother. Um, he kicked one three, I think, Potty Clifford. And also with Dara, Dara Moynihan in the half forward line. He was the guy that went round number 10, created a beautiful opening for, for Potty Clifford to go in for the goal. So there was one or two good performances for them. Again, as I said to you last time, it's not about the 8 to 15 for Kerry, it's about the 1 to 7. What are they like at the back? What can they bring in defensively up against the likes of uh, Dublin this year if they do meet them? The problem's at the back. It's not up front. So, you know, 11 points conceded. OK, that's fair enough. Let's see how they continue the season. But good starting point after where they finished last year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. A very impressive start by the Kingdom on uh, Saturday evening. And the next game was uh, Tyrone and Donegal. And I suppose, uh, Kevin, uh, you can touch on that game. Yeah, well, obviously Connor knows more of what's going on with Donegal and Throne. Can I just say that I thought it was a decent game of football to watch for the first time out. Let's mm-hmm. give players credit where they're due credit. Um, you know, they haven't got an awful long run into this, especially Throne under new management. You know, it was an entertaining game. What I actually liked about it is there was a bit of rough and tumble in it. I don't know, Connor and uh-huh. myself marked each other, you know. He likes a bit of rough and tumble in the game. It was, it was, it was, look, it was good viewing for us guys, you know, to yeah. watch a game. It was good viewing. You know, there was a wee bit of nip, and I liked that because, you know, Tyrone are hurting from last year, and that, that showed. And, you know, in my opinion, they're going to meet Donegal in the semi final this year in the championship, all being well. No offence to Calvin, John, but, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, maybe a bit of shadow boxing about this game. Um, just a couple of points on the game itself. Lovely to see somebody like Paul Donahue come onto the scene. He's kicked 10 points, five of them from play. Mm. You know, he, he gives he gives something different that wasn't there under the under Mickey Hart in the last couple of years. You know, that's a new dynamic, somebody else to be considered in there. Um, in terms of just the only other question to have about Tyrone is, they didn't really play Dara Calvin to late on. I'd love to see Dara Calvin being thrown in in these first couple of games. Let's see what he's got in senior football. You know, you compare that to Dublin. Dublin had four new starters last Sunday, you know, saying, right, who's going to break into the team? Who's going to poise something different here? So I would have liked to see seen that. Donegal, we can go on all day about Michael Murphy, six points, but it's not about that. It's about his contribution overall, going back, you know, winning primary ball, scoring frees, the work he does for other people. You know, we can rave all day about him. Paddy McBurdy coming back, showing a small bit of form, which is a good... Good, uh, good point for Donegal going forward. But listen, um, decent game of football. Tyrone hit 12 wides and only get beat by two points. Um, Connor McKenna coming in and hit to the end of the goalkeeper's hand, 12, which isn't great. Um, but, you know, there's a lot to build on. You know, Tyrone supporter, Tyrone people, as Connor will tell you more about it than me, they don't like getting beat. But what I'd say to them is, this is a decent starting point against a very strong Donegal team. There's a lot to build on. There's a lot for Tyrone people to be maybe enthused about moving forward. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what about yourself, uh, Connor? Obviously, a, a two-point uh, loss for Tyrone, but you know, a good competitive game of football. Oh, I definitely was. I agree with Kevin. Like it was a good, great competitive game, and I did enjoy that wee bit of the niggle and stuff involved. And we off the ball. It's good. It's, you know. And if you that aren't fair to have, you know, doing that wee bit off the ball or, or blocking a run here here and there, like it's good to see and so it's a bit of a game awareness as well. Like you don't want more fear running down the middle of either for a cutters run off and stuff like that. So I, I, I like that a bit thrown. But again, so it's disappointing to lose the game first and foremost. But a few things that can work on and, and and look forward to. Um a few wee things that I looked at seen in the game there seemed to be a lot of more of a high press at, at different times. Maybe don't go into a short kick out, thrown or for two put a bit of pressure on where in previous years they were just dropping off back to their own 65 or midfield area. So it seemed to be more of a high high press on, on Donegal's kickouts. I know they were caught maybe one or two times long or patting for the for the goal long over the top, maybe to the likes of Murphy and that and that space. So there's we think that Throne can, can work on in that and when when to push and when not to push. You know, so it will just take time, you know, do do her and Fergal and it will take time to to adjust and, and learn and, and pick up what they what they want to way to play or what they want them to do. So uh, I think the likes of maybe Mark Bradley could have been maybe started maybe or introduced a wee bit earlier along with, along with 
along with Dara a bit earlier in the game would have caused we have more problems to the Donegal defence. I think with having Richie in there, I thought maybe Richie we could have out, could have come out midfield a bit more and played because you know he's a great kick pass with the ball, like he's great in the, in the middle with Dara Mark and Said. So, but again, surely surely days and someone to look forward to. You know, the, as, there's someone there they can build on. And looking forward now to another derby with, with Armagh, away to Armagh now next Saturday evening. So, another tough tough encounter there. Their performance yesterday, I thought they, they worked hard and, and looked that like we been extra sharp as well. So, it's disappointing to lose again, but we're looking forward to hopefully another good game Saturday night and, and build from it. I think it's a, it's a building process and, and looking forward to the championship was, was the main thing. Yeah, definitely with a shout out to Dyerton. Uh, the next game was uh, Dublin against Roscommon and uh, Dublin uh, won uh, 122 to 16 points. Uh, so against, uh, I suppose, an upcoming Roscommon team, uh, Connor. So uh, an impressive start for the uh, Mighty Dubs. Uh, I just tell you, they're the, they're the team to beat just without a doubt. Like, you know, um, you haven't said have four starters in them. Cruised, cruised their back. They could have won by another 10 points maybe. They're just so efficient and everything they do. Even though they make a mistake, it doesn't seem to to bother them really. If they give the ball away, it's just a, a collective thing that right we have to give the ball back within five six seconds or even shorter time. So mistakes or conceding scores don't seem to really upset their pattern of play. They have uh, real focus on what they're doing, and it's, it's just so so hard to break down. Their mental strength is, is just off the charts. I think they just the cope with no matter what happens, whether the team's playing man to man, whether they're going. 15 or 20 men behind the ball doesn't seem to matter what what the other teams do. So they just just unbelievable. And, and Cormac Oslo didn't maybe get much of a look in last year and turn around now and hit on 13 or someone was it was amazing. And could have another two two goals like you know as well the penalty. So just amazing what they can do and what they can produce. And they're the team to beat without a doubt. Like and just probably unfortunate Russ Common just happened to the team that. You know, there's always there, there about just coming and, and Connacht every given year there. So they've gone hard and doing what you call the machine. It's just hard, just hard, hard to break down at the minute. That's just full of confidence and not going so well. It's, they're good. it's a pretty dynamic area this year as far, as far as I can see. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, Kevin, yourself, uh, Dublin weren't bad. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> you know, Look, as I said to you before, everybody can cry about their resources. It is what it is. We'll have to find a way to beat them. The way to beat them is going to be a shoot out of the UK Corral because if you sit back and try to suck up, you're not going to win. Um, no. The most frightening stat from yesterday's game in that is that they kicked 112 before they kicked a wide. You know, when you're doing that, you know, uh, their average, I think their average last year was 17 scores in a game. You know, they're just going to all out attack you, all out attack you, all punish you. Again, Connor touched on a brilliant point. The mental strength that these guys have to come back time and time again, to produce performance after performance, to bring in new blood. Again, he touched on Connor Coslow, 113 yesterday, adds something new to the forward line, gives Desi when he comes back from his holiday in Portugal. Um, <laughs> something, to, something to think about. Um you know, and, and you know, just a small point. Ross Common, as I said to you last week, look, I know Pucher quite well. He will have them competitive, uh, and there were in in faces that were competitive yesterday. For example, at midfield, you know, Brand Fenton didn't have the game that he usually has in the middle of the park. Um, but you know, the thing about them, the thing about Dublin is they're just like a full machine. When one part isn't working, the other part steps up to the mark, and they're they're just going to be so so difficult to beat. There's such depth in the squad, there's such competition for places, and as I say, you can't be defensive against them. You have to go for an all-out shootout. Yeah, yeah, it just it reminds you of the answer from Buckler's really Kevin, wouldn't it? And then um... the only thing that they the only thing that they were shooting was the British Army. <laughs> <laughs> The next game was uh, Monaghan against Armagh and uh, Armagh won 116 to uh, 112. So uh, Kevin, good win for uh, Kieran McGeady and uh, Kieran Donnie's uh, Armagh. Yeah, great start. I predicted they would win this one. One thing with Kieran and Connor knows this probably 
more than most is he's a great competitor. He's going to make them very, very competitive in this league, regardless of the resources he's got. Look, they're up in Division 1 where they want to be. They started it well. I said to you last week, to beat a Monaghan team, you've got to work bloody hard. And they got the perfect start. Um, they got the goal after, what was it, 40, 40 whatever else seconds. Um, I think they went five or six points up before Monaghan really got a foothold <clears throat> in the game. So in terms of, you know, Monaghan, you know, again, they didn't play an awful lot of their best players until maybe just after the break. Conor McManus come on, the two Hughes come on, Fit and Kelly come on. So, you know, for our man, it's a good start. It's exactly what they wanted. They got Ross McQuillan off the bench as well. He may have something to add as the season goes on, coming back from the Aussie rules. So, you know, good start for them. Got what they needed. Got off the mark early. The only thing I would say was when they did get that good start, they sort of lay back on it a bit. And Monaghan, you know, I think twice or three times in the third quarter, it was nip and tug there, maybe level on four or five occasions. So they need to, when they get that good start, they need to capitalise on it. But yeah, I'm sure Geezer's happy today. And Kane Donner, he had the three, two, three day, day camel ride. I'm sure that he's happy enough heading back to Tralee with uh, <laughs> with uh, all his popcorn in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All about yourself, there, Connor. Uh, good start for our man. I wouldn't mind some of that popcorn he's getting out of. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, a uh, good result. Uh, our ma just looked like a team that's stepping up a wee level or two again. You know, um, player I really like is Rory, Rory Grigan. I like him. Whatever's about him, he just. If I stay least, he can always chip in on a couple of scores. He can work back, he can tackle and get forward and get the scores. Uh, I really like him and I think it could be a bit of a big season from him, you know. And Again, along with the O'Neill brothers and that, and, you know, they'll be they're the three boys that could really do, do, do team damage, you know. Um, from a Monaghan point of view, the thing maybe that I'd be thinking about is that it still depend on, on the old hands, you know. Uh, Darren Hughes and Keane Hughes come on. Well, McManus is going to be starting anyway. But they depend on that. Fenton Kelly made it come on. Uh, Carlo Collin playing as well. Like so, just depend on them four or five old hands all the time. Is there anybody new to come in and really push them out of the way and say, "Thank you, you've done great," but I'm going to take your spot now and really lead this team? So that'll be only concern about Monaghan. That just depend on these older hands all the time. There's a lot of males in the legs. They're top quality players. Don't get me wrong. They're brilliant players and uh, and serve the county very well. But have they got another? Going them for another tough tough season, and they're in a tough division, and so they've got up against them now again, again next weekend, like so against Donegal. So it'll be a big game for them to, which you could relegate it again. So it'll be tough to get back up again. It's happening to get relegated or in playoffs and stuff. But very very difficult to get turn around and get back up to that division one where a lot of teams want to be. So entertaining game, enjoyed the game. It was very high scoring, quality scores, entertaining game as well. I thought so, but that'll be the only sort of concern I have with with Monaghan at the minute. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're shout out to those. Good uh, start for uh, McGee, or McGinney's uh, Arma. And in Division 2, you had uh, Mayo against uh, Down. So Mayo uh, coming out winners on this one, uh, 221 to uh, 111. So uh, Connor, a good start for Mayo. Uh, again, Mayo, Mayo at home, very, very hard to beat them, no matter whether it's championship or, or, or league. I always find always always very competitive, competitive team. Down, uh, a long travel down, long spin down. Uh, found it very difficult again. Seem to still sort of find their feet maybe on their on their party. Just haven't really got stringing results or performances together. I, I feel I think there's maybe more more in the camp. Again, maybe depending on a few older boys or boys with a lot of males and Kevin McKiernan, Keel Mooney uh, in, in there as well. Um, um, you know, any team's going to find it tough against Mayo again. I think Mayo have a point to prove after this last number of years of what's happened to them. They're, they're a team that's always always going to the well all the time and. Again, can they do it this year again? But they seem to be coming with Tommy or wee boy Conroy, is it? And, and corner forward, I like the, like the way he's going. Sharp player, he's very direct for a cornerback or defender marking on by just be a nightmare, I think. He, the speed of him, he just he gets the ball and turn and he's gone. He just disappear like he wouldn't, no point running after him. He's onion bag just, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, like, I like him, you know, he's an interesting player and you know, for man to sort of come in this last year too, he's very, highly impressive. With their with all the retirements and stuff that's had this last year, or so can can Mayo up the ante and compete with what we see now as uh, as Kerry and, and Dublin's the top two? Can they turn around and compete? But get off to a good start. They'll be they'll be happy. 
they're happy with the performance, happy with the, the high score they put up, and two points on the board, and they move forward and look forward to the next day. Yeah, yeah, definitely, we're a doubt. And uh, yourself, Kevin, Mayo, uh, good win for them. Yeah, well, if, if you remember back, I predicted that this could be 10, 12 points for Down. They do not travel well in the league. Um, look, Connor hit the nail in the head in many ways. Mayo shouldn't be in this league. They should be a league up. You know, they've been three, two, three, four, the last All Ireland finals. Um, yes, they have had retirements, but that then opens the door for young people, uh, young lads coming into the squad to to take a claim for a place and, and offer something new to, to James. Um, and, you know, when you score 221 any day, regardless of the opposition, it's good going. So, look, Mayo are going to get up out of this league, in my opinion. I think they've Meath next. Um, so, you know, that'll be interesting. Or maybe, sorry, you know, uh, yeah, I think it's me they have next to Meath or Westmeath or Westmeath maybe coming. So, they'll be looking to get up pretty quickly. Um, and again, just grinding for the championship, they'll be looking forward to, to their big days out in, in June. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and a, a good start for uh, James Horn's men. And of course, you had in the next game you had uh, Cork against Kildare, uh, uh, probably a surprising victory for Kildare. Good win for them, two twelve to fourteen points. And uh, Kevin, a good uh, start for Jack O'Connor's men. Yeah, again, I've been very critical of Cork as I said to you before. Look, where do we start with Cork? I mean, if you have a guy going down to the bookmakers every week, you just the one thing you're telling him is, do not at all. Well, firstly, gamble responsibly, but <laughs> the, only way to, the only way to gamble responsibly is don't put any money on Cork because you never know <laughs> what the hell's going to happen with them. Um, or Antrim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I'm really disappointed in Cork. Um, I do think Ronan McCarthy has possibly got them going in the right direction. They are up a league. You know, the big carry, obviously, last year, maybe the last minute, whatever else, that shock. But, you know... Kildare, as I said, he didn't start the league well last year. You know, Jack O'Connor's in there for year two. Maybe he's getting to know that that good team, uh, that, sorry, that, that team that he wants for the year. But for them to travel down to thirds, and by the way, if you look at the game, they were always in control. They were always in control of the game. Um, and it's a it's a handsome enough win for them. Um, you know, okay, maybe four points, but I watched some of the highlights. And uh, Cork looked very vulnerable at the back, very vulnerable. So... Um, hard to know what we're going to get from Cork, but a good start for Kildare, unlike they've done in the past two league campaigns. So Jack will be very happy with them, something for them to build on. As I said to you before, his big emphasis might be trying to get the Leinster final this year and see see what they can do from there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that was a great start for Jack Connor's men. And uh, Connor, obviously, uh, you're impressed with Kildare, I suppose. I sort of doubt. Like, you know, there's some quality footballers. Uh, they can turn it on at any time, definitely have, and they, they, they like going forward. They definitely are a team that's really like to attack you. But again, on the flip side, what, what have they got at the back of the of enough to, to, to mind the house and, and stop the stop the goals going in or leaking, leaking goals? You know, that would be the only concern again that would have was, was, was Mayo. Um, again, with Cork, just like Kevin said, just a real a mixed bag. You just you wouldn't watch. And that's going on for, with Cork this long, 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 long time. Like, you know, they're just a mixed bag of stuff that. Could shoot the lights out one night and then the next day, the next day, and and then could happen. You know, you could you could turn around and have them just by as much. You know, so Cork's just I think sort of still still into the transition really type 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 of team. So, but Kildare will be will be really satisfied of get, getting off to one start, and that's what it's all about. And these sort of small leagues or condensed leagues is getting off to a good start and it makes life that wee bit, wee bit easier for you if you're going into your, your second round with the victory on the belt and you're not looking over the shoulder and, and thinking about maybe relegation and stuff or, or play or relegation, relegation playoffs so a massive massive win for, for Gildare will be looking to, to, to push up into Division 1 Yeah, yeah, super win for them in fairness and uh, Clash of the Titans as you said yeah, Kevin last week Mead against West Mead and Mead came out on top 16 points to 15 and uh, not a bad win for uh, Mead, Connor. No, a good start, I suppose, against their, the, the, the local rivals, the local neighbours there. Yeah, it definitely was. I just again, I seen a bit of the highlights last night and again, some great scores and stuff. But again, the Mayo, or I'm sorry, Mead seem to be nearly a, a sleeping giant down there. I know that they're trying hard and working hard, but just uh, playing supposed to catch up to, to Dublin all the time. But I suppose you have to start somewhere. You have to keep plugging away and keep working away. and. <coughs> To keep getting getting victories, it means massive massive for the confidence. You know, if you're going into weeks a week on week on and, and you're losing games, you're definitely thinking, you know, what's the point of this? And oh, with Dublin to play the next and the championship or 
possibly a Dublin to play in a semi final. But when getting a victory means means massive, you know. And Westmeath are, are supposed to be a team that's again are, are looking to catch the likes of Meath and get the likes of Kildare, you know, trying to, to build on build on what they have and, and, and push them teams and it's about a building process for a lot of them teams and maybe a hell of a lot of teams, maybe even outside of Leinster. As I say earlier, trying to play catch up to the, to the dubs. And, but you have to look forward to every game you go out and, and give it a lash. And, and, and you never know what can happen happen the next day. Yes. Just, just keep keep trying and keep working away as best you can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, who went for me, Kevin? Yeah, well, me the old of the great me teams of coming back from the dead and out of nowhere. I think with 14 minutes to go, me were. Five, six point, four, five, six points down. So late rally for me. The one good thing about it, they had twelve different scores across the across the uh, seventy minutes. So that will please Andy McIntyre. Good start for them. Um, again, Westmeath and Meath. Connors hit the nail on the head. They, the league is the focus for these teams because realistically, when you look at a knockout championship, straight knockout, most of these guys know that have come up against the dub, they're going to get their lights punched out, you know, and. So it's about maybe just this season building a team, building a squad, looking forward maybe to progress up a league. Me certainly would have Division One ambitions like they had in the past. Um, just a quick mention from my old college buddy, John Hassan. He scored five points again for West Meath. What a tremendous footballer he is. Um, yes, yeah, look, yeah. All, all due credit to him. You know, uh, Jerry Egan tried hard for them as well. And the young fella locked in, scored five points as well, which is worth a mention. So, look, West Meath have decent footballers. Again, Echo and Connor. Get in, build something, get up a league, try and get better quality games each week. You know, and we're going to come on now and talk about a match. And this is exactly what this other team have done because I think they're going to come on to Clare now. And this is exactly why Clare, what they've done is they've got up a league, they've started to play decent sides and they've started to get involved in matches, you know, scraps almost and come out the right side of that. And that's built confidence. And, you know, again, uh, Connor, I'll speak about it maybe in a minute, but Clare's win for me is, is possibly the pick of the weekend again. You know, continuously overachieving, you know, 116, 12 points against a leash side that I think are going in the right direction under Michael Quirk. You know, Leash had a very strong team out. You know, when you think about it, that uh, the two, two Kingstons, Donny and Paul Kingston, the John O'Loughlin playing, the Devin O'Carroll playing, the Colin Begley playing, Leash had a very strong squad going down to Ennis. And yet, you know, Owen Cleary kicked 10 points for Clare. Um, so, again, all credit to Colin Collins, all credit to Clare, what they're doing. And they're they basically are a um, the you know they're an example for other teams like Meath, oh sorry West Meath, and for the Garrys and the Longfords and, and teams we'll come on to talk about later. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with that was the next game we were going to move on to uh, Clare against Leash and a very good win for uh, Clare Connor. I definitely was, and I totally agree with Kevin. What's what where, where they're situated at? Like they're they're building it, building it and, and doing very very well. And just seen a clip of was Rowan Cleary's point outside of the, from the sideline. It just uh, class, just, it just shows the, the bit of class that he has. Like, and it, it's great to see that. You know, they're full of confidence and they're building. Like, and, and who's like them in Tipperary? An example of you say what what can be done. Uh, they're who could be fighting against the the small ball down there. Maybe a lot, a lot of cases, you know. So they're they're an example as Kevin says, and it's great to see that. You know, they are pushing and, and working hard and, and doing stuff. That will challenge the bigger teams, and so it's all about that progression and building. You know, get the league, good platform in the league, and, and build for the championship, and get up, get up the divisions, and and work for that, and, and try and, and. You have to give them teams the god credit because not every year they're going to win win silver, silverware. You know, we monster is going to be Cork or Kerry this last number of years, and you know, Leinster's Dublin, you know, Mayo maybe, and, and Galway, and up Ulster maybe a bit more, a bit more competitive, but. You don't have to give them credit. They're working hard. They're working away. They're trying to improve all the time. They're trying to compete. And it's just amazing that they keep they keep going all the time and they keep trying and keep 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 that desire and that will to win all the time. And it's great to see. And the just the performances they got against against a very strong leash team, as 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 Kevin said, it was great to see it. And long may it continue. That's what you want teams competing at the highest level level as as possible. And hopefully, they keep continuing, keep building on it. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, guys, this podcast is sponsored by yogaretro.com. Check the website for all your retro gear needs and wants. And uh, we'll move on to Division 3. The fourth game of the weekend was uh, my beloved Cavan. We uh, were bet by one point against Romana. And uh, we'll uh, start off with Connor because I know Kevin wants to give you abuse about this one. 
<laughs> I'd go easy on you. Then. <laughs> I would say probably a, a fairly disappointing result, maybe for Calvin, maybe that after after what they did last year, I'd say they're probably slightly disappointed in, in the way it worked out for them. Um, they wanted to, I suppose, build on on, on last year's performance or last year's efforts. Uh, but again, I suppose you had to fair play to Romana. Um, I know Racy had them going very well there. They've been training very hard and, and, and working hard again. Always a team that's always we all, I always found hard to hard to beat in any skill, no matter when you're playing or what you're playing. Even McKenna Cup, very very hard, very competitive team in there, and you know their their team that's sort of in the maybe Calvin or the sort of the Clare bracket, maybe just maybe a step below. Maybe if you want to say this, they keep plugging away, keep working hard. They they're, they're highly competitive, but again, just maybe just not having the the quality maybe of the, the so-called bigger teams at the minute, you know, but. They're always competitive, and it's great to see them. You know, small pack of clubs, have them many clubs, and 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 So it's good to see them competing at a high high level and, and pushing on. But regards, Kevin, I think it might do no harm at the same time if they take it in a in the right way. You know, they use it as a, maybe a more of a, a motivation. Yes, the, the lost the game, but look forward to the next day. We use it as motivation to teams are going to be out there. You're up on a sort of a pedestal after winning Ulster last year. That's you know, you're not getting it all as handy, or you're not when every game is handy, maybe, or you know, it's it's, it's a highly competitive. But I think Calvin Calvin be okay. And forward to the rest of the league and, and definitely going to into the challenge against their own. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll uh, swiftly move on, and then we <laughs> <laughs> go on, Kevin. <laughs> uh, I swear, Conor Gormley is definitely. I think maybe Michelle and he might be under tr- under pressure because. That was a true politician's <laughs> answer about, from a true man talking about Calvin and uh, coming into the championship. You know, a wily old, wily old operator, Conor Gormley. Um, I want to get back on the show again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Look, John, where do you start? You, you take 10 steps forward and you take two steps back. Um, firstly, look. You know, Connor's right. For man are well set up. Racy, you know, look, we all know about Racy. He's going to be tenacious. He's going to want the best out of his players. Look, and a couple of players haven't turned out for him this year. It's for man a small pick. The Joneses aren't there. A couple of Corrigans aren't playing for him. You know, so fair play to Racy. He set them up and he set them. Uh, they're going to be very difficult to beat. And all credit where credit's due. Um, but when you're also champions, you know, when you're looking to get up to that next level, um, where you're trying to be consistent, as I said, Calvin have won maybe five, three, four, five minors and 21s, you know, over the last number of years. Mm-hmm. You need to step up to that mark. You need to put it down to Tyrone and to Donegal and say, we're going to be consistent. You know, you can't just win an Ulster Championship and then the next week go down to Enniskillen. And you know what really hurt me about Calvin's performance? They played into Rice's hands. Last year, they've had a real open, expansive game, an attacking game, especially in the down match last year, if you watch that. They really had this will mm-hmm. to go forward. Like at half time, it was six points to five, and that was because Galligan just before half time kicked the point. You know the goalkeeper. There was no real willingness to get forward from Calvin, and and, and that sort of I'm sure Mickey Graham would be upset with that. The other thing was the a new boy in the squad, this young boy Lynch up front, and he kicked four points, two from freeze, okay, but two from play. And the fair play to him, he staked down a a, a, a marker because <coughs> they will need fresh blood if they want to go back and and and, and you know go back and do back-to-back Ulster Championships. So he he is a plus point for Calvin, don't get me wrong. But, you know, to go up there, to get beat in the manner that the dead, to not play the open, expansive game, James Smith again, what a stupid red card, you know, at a vital time in the game. Yes, the game was levelled up, um, sort of with James McMahon getting a second yellow, but you, fair play, Sean Quigley stepped up to the mark. I think it was Kieran Corrigan, come on, stepped up to the mark when they needed it most in the in the final quarter. Great desire from Fermanagh. All credit where credit's due. But, Calvin, back to the drawing board a wee bit. And it's a must-win game now, the next game for Calvin. That's, as Connor said, it's a short turnaround in this league. And they don't want to be facing, you know, any sort of relegation battle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. And uh, back to back to drawing board and regroup for uh, Longford this weekend. And then the next game, you had uh, Derry against Longford and Derry... Coast is home to victory in this one, uh, Connor. Uh, Twenty-one points to five points. Uh, where did it all go wrong for Longford? Oh, that's a good, good question. Maybe all right. Um, maybe a bit of a shock. Maybe I would say for Longford, not that easy to beat at home. 
Um, so they just seem to cruise to victory. They seem to be Connor Glass, and we seem to be the man that the chat about that's really stepped up and a massive, massive plus for him or for Derry, sorry, for him to come back uh, into that squad and step up and sort of nearly to be there. The main man that's stayed away to be the leader, you know. So exceptional player and Derry, one of these teams that again sort of maybe a wee bit like Kildare, maybe you know they could shoot the lights out one day too and then another day and just not turn up, you know. So but again, Derry if they get back together. Under Rory Gallagher, you never know what they could do. Like so, again, he'll want to be like highly competitive, like he was was for Mana. You know, he has them set up properly, set up well. They'll be very tenacious. They'll be they should be very hungry. Today, I'd imagine. You know, they've, they haven't really this last four or five years really haven't got a good consistent run in maybe league or championship. They're bound to do a bit of hunger there within the Derry players to really push on and and show what they're capable of doing. Like they have the talent, they have the players, their club scene. Is one of the most competitive probably in Ireland. So they have the players there. So it's up to for them to, to gel together and and to take on board what Rory's trying to do and and really push on and, and try and aim for a good league run. And then obviously championship run would be would be massive. I think for Derry, if Derry got on a bit of a run in championship, would would, would boost them even for the next no, number of years. Would be would be key for them. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, Kevin, my start for uh, Rory Gallagher and his uh, Derry men. Yeah, um, I think. Uh, look, from I didn't see many of the, any of the highlights, but from all the reports I read right across, I think Connor hit the nail on the head. Uh, Connor Glass, that's basically that was coming through in every report that was there. Well, mm-hmm. he, sco- he scored not two, but it was a contribution he gave to the game. Mm-hmm. And you know, as I said here a couple of weeks ago when I was on about you know watching him up in Belfast at the minor tournaments with Glenn, you know. This kid is an incredibly talented footballer. It's great to have him home. He's going to be a huge boost going forward. Might take him a year or two just to blend right back in, but he's an incredible athlete, um, and he's going to be so positive for Derek. Good to say Shane McGuigan scoring not seven as well, which is good. Um, so really for me, uh, as I said to you, I know Rory pretty well. Connor's 100% ready. He'll have them well set up. They'll be very difficult to break down, but their big aim is to get out of that division. By God, they need Derry is a... You know, as I said to you before, they've won the National League not, not less than 15 years ago. You know, we need a strong Derry. In Ulster, we need a really strong Derry. We need to get them up to the leagues. That's their main aim for this year. Get out of where they are. Uh, and, you know, let's start building. They had a wee bit of minor success. Let's start building a team around that in the last couple of years and see what they can do. Yeah, definitely. And a very impressive start for Rory Gallagher and one he'd be very happy with. And it's probably a surprise result. Uh, Limerick won 13, uh, Tip 14 points. Uh, Kevin, uh, not a great start for Tipperary. No, um, I, I I actually, I, I said to you that I watched Limerick last year play Antrim and they were their fabulous, big, physical team, Connor. They remind me actually of, of Carrick Moore when we played them, you know, <laughs> You get a you know big awes and that sort of you know, that sort of guys you know six foot four men yeah, nice big friendly boys oh nice big friendly fella <laughs> you know, you know um, men chiselled from mountains real huge team but a lot of pace as well um, there was a young fella Neville I think he scored the goal actually really pacey player um, so yeah Tipperary actually went four points up in that game and then they only scored ten you know four nil up and then they end up getting beat. Um, so I think Limerick scored a goal just after half time, but you know it's 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 wise for people to remember. Tipperary won the most championship last year, and they had a cracking game against Limerick in the semi final. I think it was one fifteen to two eleven, so it was a really good game of football. So you know Limerick are up a league again. They want to aspire to be a Clare or a Westmeath, you know, in the future. That's where they need to start building from. They're certainly they're going to be a very competitive team in this league. They're going to be physically they'll be very hard to uh, break down. So yeah, it's a real great start for them. Tipperary, you know, again, a bit like Calvin. We want them, you know, we want a strong Tipperary. You know, they've fluctuated really good under age this last seven, eight years, but we need that consistency, you know. And yes, there is an emphasis on the small ball down there, but we need a consistent Tipperary, not one that comes every once every four or five years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh uh, a good win for Limerick, Connor. Oh, sort of, it definitely is. Yeah, and they probably agree with definitely what Kevin said there. The consistency, probably, uh, and the both teams maybe just they want to have good solid campaigns and, and really push on and, and drive up, drive up them them leagues. And you probably just Tipperary, maybe in the Kevin sort of bracket, as you say, Kevin, maybe they're taking steps forward and maybe taking ones back. Like so, it'd be disappointing for them after what what they did last year and the success they had. And 
But again, it's, uh, it's all up maybe a learning curve too. Don't forget these teams are only back two, three weeks, maybe collective training, and they haven't got much maybe game time under the belt, and it could just take a, a game or two really to, to click into gear again. So maybe that could happen like so Tipperary and, and, and Cavan as well. Like, so it just could take, could take that game or two to really find out what's happening and find your feet and even, even match fitness, you know, it can take could take three, four games maybe to get match fitness. I know myself there, it could take nine or ten maybe or more maybe to get match fitness going again. So <laughs> it could take a right wee while, but you know, these high boys are playing at a high level, just take maybe that wee game or two to, to really get to find their feet and, and push on. And But they'll, they'll learn from it, them teams will all, all learn from it and, and, and really look forward to the next day of the match. Yeah, well, it'll take, if it takes Conor Gormley nine games to get match fit, then God help the rest of us, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I've seen him play a Tyrone Championship but, game a couple of years back, and he, I think he was playing full forward, or he was playing in the forwards anyway. And listen, <laughs> he, still had, had him, he, still had a, he still had a wee touch of the David Cliffords about him then, so. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, yeah, yeah, Andy. <laughs> I don't. I don't no know. Co- no Clifford, I, I don't know if David Clifford could defend like Conor Gormley, mind you. But that's a different question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, move on. We'll move on. Uh, I don't, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember, Jason, been... after Kevin one or two times too. You need to be much fit. I know that. <laughs> oh, you want to see me now? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> In the golf course. <laughs> Um, and the last game to uh, wrap up Division 3 was Offaly against Wicklow and Offaly uh, strolled home to victory 114 to 110 and uh, not a bad win for John Mahon's main cover I definitely is I John come in uh, and done a fairly good job there again he's got them highly competitive again that's what that's what the main aim they're <laughs> unfortunately just in a, in a Leinster there that's not going to be easy to get out of again as they're, they're fighting against the grain big time but Good to see he's coming in there. Dif- difficult job again. Likes of the hurling as well. Maybe the hurling was Michael Fanley coming in as well. They, they sort of had a change. Maybe the mindset that got into a sort of a uh, maybe a losing streak. Maybe just uh, things haven't been going that well for them. And awfully, you know, the looking back maybe on, on previous successes and stuff. Maybe and the, they've forgot about what they're really about. But again, always highly competitive and the, the team that could be just sort of in that bracket again, aren't they? That's if they do a wee bit more, you wouldn't know what they could do. Like if they get all everybody together, back together and playing, you wouldn't know what they could do. Like so, a team that you, the, the team I always like following because they're, they're sort of the same colours as, as my club team. So <laughs> always keep a wee eye for them, too, eye for them as well. You know, and uh, it's, it's good to see them sort of back, back on track again and, and getting the win under the belt, and that'll only bring, bring confidence and we we'll look forward now to the rest of the league with a, a bit of hope and, and see what they take from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and a uh, good win for Offaly and John Mahan, Kevin. Yeah, it was. Um, look, I think uh, Connor's. I echo a lot of what he said. Offaly at the minute seemed to be in a, in, in a good upward curve. Michael Dagnum's the chairman down there. I noticed last week, the week before, they have a new training ground, whatever else opened up. Obviously, we all know about the Shane Laurie incident coming in, where he's coming in. There's going to be a cash injection. Hurling football wise, look, both hurling football wise, we need a strong Offaly. Um, they have great tradition in there. They're real proud county. So hopefully, you know, they can get up through the leagues. In terms of this game, it's the the old usuals. Bernard Allen, not three. Niall McNamee, not two. You know, again, a bit like John Haston. Um, and we'll t- come to talk about boys in Division 4. Credit where it's due um, for these guys. So, um, yeah, a good win for them. It's hard to go to Ockram, you know. And they were well up at half time, one nine to one three, I think it was. And then, obviously... Um, if they were paid back in the second half. But they'll take that and they'll go in with a bit of confidence against both Tipperary and Limerick to try and see if they can get up that end of the league final. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we'll move on to Division 4. Unfortunately, me and Kevin, or me and Connor don't have much knowledge of this, but I think, uh, Kevin, you've been in knowledge in Division 4. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Connor Gormley's your expert because he knows the psychology behind half the bloody managers in Division 4. <laughs> 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 It'll be scary delving into that uh, psychology. <laughs> and in Division 4, you'd uh, Antrim, a mighty, mighty win for Antrim against Loud. 115 to 3 8, and we've seen Paddy Cunningham kick some unbelievable points That's for true. the weekend as well. Kevin McGarty, what a win. Yeah, good win. Um, I actually didn't tip them. Um, I know you didn't. 
So <laughs> I thought that I thought that Live would get the Mickey Hart bounce, um, and for mm. a long periods of time that they did. Um, so yeah, it's a good win for Antrim. Don't get me wrong, but again, the problem is you've just said it. You know, three goals conceded. I know Anne and Stephen will probably want to work on that throughout the year and reduce that down. Can't concede goals like that, especially down Division <laughs> Four. You know, got to work a lot in defence. The other big problem for them is a lot of these kids have been neglected underage. There wasn't good setups. You know, I'm sure Connor can can tell you when he was coming through in Tyrone, there was always good kids coming up. The minors, 21s. Paddy Cunningham's coming on the age of 34, 35, 36. All credit where he's due. He, he, you know, uh, he, he had to come through some difficult times with illness and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Class, class player. You know, exhibition of of how did any kid want to watch throughout Ireland. You know. That's the way to take points. He stepped up to the mark when the mo- most needed towards the end. Ryan Murray, another very good player, um, stepped up to the mark as well. They got a goal just before half time, which was quite vital to them. Um, so it's a good start, um, but there's lots to work on for the two guys in there. Um, you know, for Stephen and for 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 Enda. and they've got a guy Sean Kelly from my club in with him, who's a, who was a great footballer and, and a good guy as well. So look, they're. They're moving in the right direction a wee bit. Um, they have great confidence. I actually seen at the final whistle when I was watching the game and to give it an old fist pump. So it meant a lot for him to win his first game, but also to get one over on Mickey, you know, as well. So um, as for lives, you know, look, Mickey and Horse will have their work cut out. I said to you about this before. They really have their work cut out, but you know what? They're going to go down there and they're going to make life competitive and, you know, I just thought they'd have, get the bounce. They were in charge for a lot long periods of the game. Um, they're obviously planning the big win in the second half. But, you know, as I say, Mickey's big issue will be down there is get them competitive, try and see if he can build a, a project over two or three years to get loud out of that league and maybe get a championship win or two under his belt. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I don't know why you ever doubted them, Kevin, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> 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 Connor, what about yourself? A uh, good win for Antrim. Um, I know sort of Chad, uh, he, he's really enjoying the, the challenges there with Antrim. Um, sort of Chad, maybe a month ago, maybe or five weeks ago, he said the lads are tra- working away on their own at that time and trying hard. And, and he's just looking forward to getting game time. Um, he was really looking forward to the challenge of, uh, challenge of playing against Mickey Mickey Hart. Like, so I would say the wee first pump was lovely to get one over his old, old manager and his old, old club mate as well. So, Good to see it. He's tra- he's working very hard. He, and this very smart, smart, smart fella. And with Stevie Long in there, like the throne fellas would love Stevie when he was in there as the sort of the coach and with the forwards, like they thought, you know, chatting sort of Mark Bradley and that maybe and and, and Darren McCray and all the time here and there. They they love Stevie. They just thought they brought something completely different to what maybe they were used to before. And he thought that the, the coaching and one to one stuff he was given, they were giving them. Was was something they never really heard before, never really got before. So I was bringing them on a level too, and I'd imagine he's doing the same now with the with the Antrim boys. So it was, it was a great result for for, for Antrim. Uh, good good start, like especially in your first game, at first competitive game to get as new manager to get a, a win away from home was was, was excellent for them. Um, so was Lowe's maybe probably disappointed again. I'd agree with Kevin. I thought maybe Mickey would have given that the extra bounce and they would have would have pulled that win off at home. But again, I suppose it's just like sort of. All the teams like a wee bit of time to 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 pick up what the managers are saying, maybe a bit, bit like Tyrone, just to take that a wee bit of time to adjust and, and learn what what the what the managing management's looking them to do. So, uh, you know, Mickey and Horse they'll relish the challenge as well. Like, suppose uh, losing the first games will be difficult in these short leagues, but they'll they'll be offered to their mad team. I seen Gavin done an interview in the Irish News maybe last week and. He thought that the Lowe's lads were, were good lads, a great, great footballers, just about gelling that all together and, and getting the two going and, and getting the back on the horse and a victory then for the next day and, and building for the rest of the year. Yeah, so let's hope uh, Horse Devin can get the Lowe boys back on the horse. <laughs> and obviously, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in the next game, you had uh, Sligo uh, beating Leitrim 219 to uh, 18 points. A uh, very convincing win for Sligo. And uh, Kevin, during the week, we weren't uh, giving the Sligo lads much of a chance. No, I have to say, um, again, we, we've just spoke about, you know, the, the live Mickey Hart bounce. Um, I wasn't so sure that that was going to happen in Sligo with the Mac and T bounce. Um, I think there's a lot of work to do, be done down there. There was one or two retirements. Um, 
So, yeah, look, all credit when you score 219 in any game. Um, you know, you set out a stall for the year. Look, Connor probably knows him a lot better than me, but McIntyre, you know, he's he's a studious boy. Like, he's not going to go down there and it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be willy-nilly. You know, this boy's going to be there for maybe two or three years, possibly. And, you know, he's going to be ultra competitive. He, you know, he's got a great win to will. Anywhere he's went, he's sort of been successful or even when he was he was down in Mayo he was semi-successful in terms of coaching teams so that project's going to be really interesting to watch okay they've got off the ground running here I just don't know you know it's going to be interesting to see them maybe up against Andrew and uh, Andrew and Louth over the next couple of weeks um Leitrim disappointing you know Terry Hyland's been down there a couple of years I spoke about it with Gary uh the other the other week you know so you know a bit disappointed in the end but a great start for Sligo and McIntyre big issue is can he build on it as I said to you before I just think everything up against him down there maybe this year is is about getting his feet underneath the ground getting good structures in finding out maybe who the best players are and then next year trying to build onwards yeah absolutely 100% and uh, of course the uh, next game was uh, Carlo uh, 316 Ward for 10 points and uh, geez a great win for Carlo Connor Start to high any time, sort of like the last of Slegway, you put up a big score. It's going to be a good day, and you're going to be going to be very hard to beat. Like so, good start for them, and they'll, they'll be relishing now the, re- the rest of the league campaign again. One of these teams that will be looking to to push on. They had sort of a great run. Was it two years ago in the championship? They'll get somewhere on the, sort of the, the Carlo Carlo Rising they were chatting about. So they'll want to get back up there again and push and get on that bit of a run. And it just uh, it's amazing what um, sort of winning the games can do, or a bit of a run in the championship can do till. To the county or to, to even the players, first of all, and then to when it spreads out into the fans and supporters and stuff, it's it's amazing what it can what it can do. And like to, like say Carlo and Waterford, these are the teams that want to get a wee bit of a, a run in, in the league and and take it from there. Like you know, but again, to win the first game and this and these these leagues is very very important as we've chatted about before. And the, they'll look forward now to the rest the rest of the rest of the league campaign and, and push on and, and see how they go from there. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, yourself, Kevin, uh, great win for Carlo. Yeah, yeah. Connor's just hit the nail on the head. There's not much more to add. It's a hard place to go, Waterford, um, down the far field. But when you kick 316, you know, great start for them. Really good confidence getting into the next game. Possibility of getting to a league final this year and then getting up a division. Again, that's Carlo's aim. Um, nothing more, nothing else. Mm-hmm. Get out of there, see what you can do. So good start uh, and onwards and upwards for them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, to wrap up, boys, uh, one or two talking points. Uh, Kerry's <coughs> form, I suppose we touched on it in the game, but uh, David Clifford scoring a hat-trick, uh, Connor. That's definitely not uh, not a bad start. No, not a bad start for the first day. I'd like to definitely not to. Uh, I def- David Clifford, he's up there as one of the best players uh, playing Gaelic football at the minute. Like, and I said earlier, earlier on, sorry, it'd be a nightmare for any defender going out on a Sunday. You have to pick up David Clifford. You'd be looking... A wee hand or two from about ten other players to stand in front of you, hopefully to cover you and don't let them get the ball. But the problem with that then maybe you like Sean O'Shea and David Moore and all these other boys and coming at you from different angles. So, but uh, David Clifford just exceptional player and for a young age too, like a what is he twenty two maybe? So it's yeah, exceptional yeah. what he's doing. And I so exceptional what he's doing and and, and leading that Kerry team sort of. We've all seen what he done at the minor minor grade and just to step into senior senior setup at Ender County just like he was playing nearly three or four years at that stage was exceptional and he's just showing both the, the rest of Ireland what he's capable of doing and long may continue, that's what you want to be seeing. But from a defender's point of view, that's the boys you want to be marking at the same time. You know, you want to be up against the best best forwards. So I'm looking as a defender myself. David Clifford, what's his weakest weak points? Uh, has, he, has he got any weak points? How do I nullify him? How do I stop him from scoring a hat trick the next day? So that's the challenge now for, for the dubs. As a Dublin defender, how do I st- stop David Clifford from scoring, having an impact uh, on the game? So it brings up challenges too for, for defenders. And that's the, the dubs will be honing in on, I imagine, for this weekend. Is stop Clifford getting the ball and stop him scoring an all hat trick. You know, if they're doing that, they're going to be. Well, on the way to victory, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And yourself, Kevin, uh, David Clifford, he's not bad. Yeah, well, as you probably know, I'm a mad Kerry fan, absolutely mad Kerry fan. And 
Conor Gormley's broke my heart on at least three occasions in Crow Park. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you haven't. Oh, broke me heart. Oh, really got. Three occasions. Oh, really um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. Conor, he, he, he's... David Clifford's probably easily the, the most gifted player in the game right now. But the big problem... I agree, with, yeah. David... You know, the big problem with David Clifford is he's in this county that's unforgiven. I mean, if you're picking a carry forward line, mm-hmm. you're looking at Declan O'Sullivan, you're looking at Daryl Canada, and you're looking at the Gooch, and you're looking at Spillane, and you're looking at all the John Egan and all these guys. The difference is multiple all Ireland winners, season after season, done it time and time again, but also mm-hmm. leaders. Now, David Clifford has all the right materials, all the right potential to do, to be one of the greats of the game, right? But the big issue for him now is making that step up to that leadership level of dragging carry when the times are tough right through, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, Tyrone never needed Calvin to drag them because they had a great all-round team. But when we look back in the game, certainly in Ulster, you look at a player like Calvin, even in the 95, 96, 97 era when Tyrone were struggling a bit, that real leader come out in Peter. You know, he was just mm-hmm. a god. You know, he dragged her own teams to, to draws or to wins and matches. That yeah. is the next bit I want to see from Clifford is, when is he going to drag Kerry up to that next level when they're really struggling? Um, because he didn't do it against Cork last year, we have to be honest. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of them did. Uh, the year before, he was really good, but, you know, they obviously come up against the juggernaut that is the Dubs. And if Kerry really want to take on the Dubs, these individual players like Sean O'Shea and like David Clifford have got to say, right, it's our time to stand up and begin at dominance. It's our time to be matching those Kerry greats. He's only 22. I know that's a lot of pressure on a kid, but he's got all everything in his armory. That's just the one thing that I want to see him do now. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm interested to hear your perspective on this as well. Uh, Cormac Costello shot the lights out uh, for Dublin at the weekend, Kevin. Do you think he can retain his place when Dean Rock does come back into the double fold, Kevin? Well, it's, uh, I'm going to pose a question to Connor actually on the flip side of this. <laughs> a couple of years ago, Mark Bradley absolutely terrorised, terrorised Ken O'Sullivan in Crook Park, right? Mm-hmm. People said Ken O'Sullivan's hamstring went, look, he came off, who got man on the match that day? Mick Fitzsimmons' his replacement because he stopped Mark Bradley after that, right? <laughs> Mark Bradley was playing on form. He was in the team because he was on form. He was shit hot sorry for using that word but he was and when a player is shit hot you keep him in the team you boost his confidence you actually say to Dean Rock you have been an unbelievable player for us but you know what this kid's playing well for me now it's your turn to step up to the grade now it's your turn to put pressure on him and that's how top teams like Dublin evolve somebody else comes in a player like Dean Rock's now looking over his shoulder going do you know what I need to kick a hundred more balls. I need to go out and do another gym session. I need to work harder for this guy. So, you know, I keep Cormac Costello in every day of the week. And the last point I'll put to you about this is a couple of years ago, a guy in Dublin told me that when Dublin were going to the All-Iron Final, he said the best player training was Cormac Costello. He says he'll not get his run maybe this year, but he's one for the future. And when you look at him... And you look at um, some of these other guys, Conor Callaghan was just coming through at that stage as well. They have really made the difference. They have changed Dublin year on year. And uh, that's, my point would be, if I'm a manager, kid stays in. He stays in for the next game. Put him in against Kerry. Look, Dublin people aren't going to judge him on how well he done against Kerry in a league game on a Saturday night in Thurles. They'll judge him, can he play against Kerry inside Crow Park? Um, and the only way you can test that is give him a good run of games. Yeah, and uh, yourself, uh, Connor, can uh, Costello keep his place in this Dublin team? Oh, uh, yes, totally agree with Kevin. Like he has to has to keep his place. Shooting one thirteen, running had never had never had one thirteen in a whole season. Never mind in one game. So <laughs> I, would, I would totally agree. Like he has to be has to be playing the next day, and and it's just uh, as Kevin sort of Kevin touched on it there. Have to I keep that competitive edge. Was Dublin likes a Dean Rock? What does he have to do now in training? He's going to push himself now to try and get in ahead of Cormac the next day. Then Cormac's going to push again to try and keep his place. So it's that competitive thing all the time, all the time. And probably that's someone that, well, that's your own team we were, I was involved in. We always pushed each other as much as we could and just we got to levels, levels and levels higher each, each time, you know. And that's what Dublin's doing. They're just pushing each other so much and doing that bit extra, doing that bit more. And just, uh, just a machine that can't can't be stopped just at the minute. Like, and... 
the motivation and the, and the hunger they have after winning six in a row, like in, in many league titles there, you'd think some someday they're about to go, well, well not maybe ball of the day, but they're just, they're just, they're just that mental strength and that just hunger and drive and determination is just unmatchable at the minute and they're just a, probably a joy to watch. Like and, and it's great to see Cormac coming in there like that, coming in and, and shooting 113. It just shows you, you know, he had a lot of disappointment maybe not starting Ireland finals and maybe and taking off and he maybe sent off in a few games as well later on there as well. So it just shows you the desire and determination he has personally himself that he's going to keep going and keep going and he will get his chance and it just shows you maybe to other fellas within county panels, keep plugging away, keep working, keep trying and when your opportunity does come, just grab it by both hands and, and show what you can do and he's one of them boys that's, that's really grabbing it and for me a definitely starter for most of the year I'd be thinking after the performance of the weekend. Yeah, I suppose and a point on it is, is I'll ask you this question, Connor. Championship, can you see Cormac Costello, you know, becoming up for the championship? Because at the end of the day, it probably is Dean Rock that will be coming into that place. Ah, uh, you well, you, Dean Rock, I suppose, there's is a pedigree there before, but again, Cormac's on the freeze as well, hitting the freeze, hitting the penalty. So he's nearly like for like and he's contributing from from play as well, like against Ross Common. So it's probably a shootout between the two of them, maybe who's gonna score most uh, and whoever gets the opportunity to play, so I would get, I keep at him. He's as Gavin said, he's a man in form. He has to be picked. He's uh, if you're playing in form, if he's dropped maybe for the next day, how, how does he how does he react? How does he how does he play when he's called upon maybe for the for the third league game or maybe in a league final for example or or in championship later on? So you know, I'd agree with Gavin. Keep him in man in form, shooting the lights out. Hard to see him being dropped. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And lastly, on lads, uh, Tyrone, can you see much changes for the weekend, Kevin, to uh, try to get that first league win? <clears throat> well, it's going to be a really interesting game because of what's happened last weekend. Um, as mm. I say, Connor, Connor would be very aware of the psyche of Tyrone fans. And as I said to you before, their passion is on, unreal. You know, the go to a game, the passion that them people have. But as I say, they're just going to have to give this these boys a wee bit of time just a wee bit of time. There's going to be, obviously, Donahue's, Paul Donahue's come in new. They're going to fiddle about with where they play Matty. You know, what's the story with PD? What are they going to do with him? Mm. Richie Donnelly, really, what's what's happening there? So they're going to need time to figure this out. Supporters also have to realise that we've touched on it, the coronavirus and the championship and whatever else. It, it's quick turnaround time. So they're not, unfortunately, they're not getting that time to work with. But the Segi coming in now is really, if you don't win this game, you're almost in a relegation battle. So, I mean, I'm expecting a small reaction from Tyrone. I'm expecting McGinney to say, right, these guys are maybe mentally a wee bit hurt. Let's try and stick a knife into them. You know, let's try and get a quick start to the game. Let's try and see if we get what we can do. This is our, you know, game in our own back garden here. You know, let's let's try and defend what we have, really. So, um, it's going to be an interesting game. I don't know if if I was Fergal and, and Brian looking in from the outside, I wouldn't panic too much. You know, again, that big start of 12 wides, you know, against a team of Donegal's calibre, you know, being competitive enough, you know, maybe one or two positional changes, uh, maybe one or two injuries. I think Ronnie McDemey came off early last week as well. So there will be changes, but I wouldn't panic too much um, if I was to run just right now. Yeah, and uh, what about yourself, Connor? Can you see many changes from a Tyrone perspective this weekend or...? Um, it's probably hard to know. Um, hard to know really what they, what they will do. Will they change it up much, or will they keep sort of a settled team? Do you change too much? Then is it up, is that upsetting everybody? Going into the next game, setting the, the rhythm of the team. But I think he likes to have to maybe think about uh, Mark Bradley and Derek Yanneman and that, that forward line. You showed maybe that they were kicking at the ball a wee bit more, trying to get it in more, a wee bit more direct. I know they lobbed in one or two maybe 50-50 balls here and there. But they were trying to be a wee bit more direct at times. So I think if you had Dara maybe and Mark in there, no small and stature and all the rest, but they're very busy. They're they're, they're physically are strong. They fit a couple all right, I think, was was close to, close defending defending. So I would look forward look to them maybe a wee bit more, whether it be starting or would it be introduced a wee bit earlier. I don't it's hard to know, maybe that's the call of the managers, but I'd like to see them maybe get more game time and I definitely this weekend. Um defensively. Ron McMee's massive loss from Ron McMee seems to be the man that's holding the ship nice and tight back there. He's, he's a great communicator. He's playing now a long time. Him going off, he got a bang then with Hugh McFadden. He seemed to cut the year, I think, badly. That's why he had to go off early. So 
he's he, he's a man that controls a lot there. He seems to he doesn't venture forward too much. He'll link the play surely a wee bit, but he'll he'll, he'll come back and, and organise and, and sort things out. Again with PD at six, I don't know if PD is maybe a, a man for six. I think maybe it could be more a man for out in the wings maybe and just tell PD just to go and play. Just play PD. Just go wherever you want to go and get involved in the game. Whether it be from the half back line or half forward line, just link that play and get involved and get on the end of the ball because PD can finish. Without a doubt, he, he's a lethal left foot on him. He's an eye for goal as well. When PD gets going, he, he's definitely hard to stop. Again, probably him and, him and Matty probably in the similar similar thing. I think maybe just let the two of them go out and play. You know, roam about, get on ball, link the play, but be a driving force at the end of the other end of the field as well. And the ball's going in early to Lakes and Dara and, and Mark. No, 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 no two better men to come off the shoulder or coming off them as uh, PD, PD and Matty would definitely cause them a serious problem. So, well, it'd to see how it works all out again. We'll just management will need a bit of time to to gel all everyone together, as we chatted about before, and work things out. And players will need a bit of time to to adjust and learn to what the demands are for it. But it's an uh, interesting game and, and one the throne. Always look forward to going to Armagh and playing Armagh, greater every down through the years. And uh, so, 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 so suppose we haven't got supporters at that mm-hmm. like that game. It'd be it'd be a mighty atmosphere going to athletic grounds on a Saturday evening. It'd, it'd be class to be honest. Oh, Jesus, Connor, it'd end up like George Square in Glasgow on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's better off than the room. Deadly. Oh, it'd be deadly, wouldn't it? It'd be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to wrap it up, lads, Kevin McCarty, your player of the week and moment of the week. Uh, player of the week, I'm going to go for Cormac Costello. Moment of the week from an Antrim fan, Andy McGinley finally in his life showing emotion outside of his personal life. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> class. <laughs> and uh, Conor Gormley, your player of the week and moment of the week. Um, player of the week, uh, I have to go for I go for David Clifford. Player of the week and for his... Nice feet tucked back inside to send the two boys flying. Finish soccer style in the net. David Clifford on both counts. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant stuff, boys. Brilliant stuff. Division one wrapped up. Um, all the results all talked about. So Kevin McGurdy, Conor Gormley, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is sponsored by yorkerretro.com. Check the website for all your retro gear needs and wants. Boys, look after yourselves. Thanks a million for joining me. Cheers. No Connor, see you later. Good luck. Good luck, Kevin. Good to see you. Bye. Thanks, boys.